when done properly, the internet, screens, and particularly social media can provide five essential elements of adolescent well-being. A sense of control over one's environment, individuation, self-expression, a connection to others, and acceptance. And then there is the abyss. Welcome to App Appropriate, a podcast designed to give you a little taste into the positives and negatives of the most popular social media apps so that you and your most importance can make more informed, healthy, and safer choices when it comes to interacting through your screens. I'm your host, Joe Langford. Note that I said safer, not safe. Interacting through screens with other humans contains a degree of natural risk, just like real life. And I believe that education leads to empowerment, and I hope this information helps add a degree of safety, social responsibility, and good digital citizenship to your social networking and the conversations you have about it with your family. Today's episode is about Tango. Tango falls into the texting or messenger app category. It's a messaging app similar to apps like WhatsApp and Kick that describes itself as the all-in-one social networking app. Tango gives users the ability to communicate by voice, text, and video across different operating systems iOS devices, Android phones, tablets, PCs, whatever. Tango also provides the ability for group chats and calls. My grandmother used to say it takes two to tango, but with the app, you can communicate with like 50 people at once. During video chats, you can share animated memes, mess around with image filters, play games, and share music in real time through Spotify. Once you install the Tango app on your machine, you can start using it straight away as an account is easily created. You don't need to create a username and a password. Tango identifies you through your phone number. More than just a way to chat with friends, younger users can spend time hanging out with each other over the app and using all the fun perks. One of the big concerns I have with this is its geolocation features. Regular listeners know that I'm against underagers sharing their location with random strangers. And with over 150 million users, Tango has a lot of stranger options. By default, your Tango profile is public, and the Find Friends Nearby feature uses location services to find other Tango users near you. As with other social networking sites and apps, some information in profiles is always public, such as your username and your picture. You can set the rest of your profile to private, and you can turn off location services for the app if you don't want to use them, but the app will regularly slash relentlessly prompt you to turn them back on. Tango is technically free, but it's important to be mindful of data consumption and to remember that there are additional in-app purchases. For example, some of the perks, such as the animations I mentioned above, cost actual funds. There's also a feature called Tango Premium Discovery in which users can chat with the most popular people on Tango for $9.99 a month, which appears to give users the ability to chat with the users who are featured on Tango's popular people page. It's not super clear what litmus they use for the popular people, though it can be assumed that it's the Tango users with the highest follower counts. The popular people feature gives users the ability to filter by gender, which smells hookup appy to me, as does the nudity in some of the more popular profiles. There's also no possibility to call people outside of the Tango network. You can't call a landline or non-Tango mobile phones. With so many apps and services out there like WhatsApp, Tango's good stuff may not outweigh its bad. Like most other apps and social sites, Tango is not intended for those under 13, and is rated 17 plus in the app stores, which seems appropriate given the above considerations and the fact that Tango doesn't seem to have a block feature. It's apps like these that both predators and douchebags are drawn to. Because the design makes it hard for users to hold safe boundaries and harder to be empowered, the creeps can find you easily and you can't tell them to go away. As an alternative, I would recommend a combination of WhatsApp and Instagram. If older teens do use this app, I still recommend caution with sharing personal information, to be wary of rando strangers, and to definitely be in their older teens. Thank you for listening. I'm Joe Langford. I'm a therapist, a sex and tech educator, and a dad, and I specialize in helping families navigate that intersection of adolescence, sexuality, technology, and behavior. 
More information about me and my work to promote healthy, positive, and safer sexual and social behavior, both online and off, can be found at my website, beheroes.net. The advice presented in this podcast is a form of education and is intended to provide general information about common though broad topics that impact underage people. Specific circumstances and facts may make said advice unsuitable and or other actions necessary for individuals. This podcast is meant to be an adjunct, not a replacement for IRL experience, professional advice, and good old-fashioned common sense. In addition, much of the information included here can and most likely will change with time, culture, and the rapid development of technology. Beheroes.net does not seek nor accept any monetary gain or financial support from any social media platform mentioned. Beheroes.net is committed to providing quality consulting, coaching, product, speaker, and contracted therapeutic services, advocacy, and resources to clients, visitors, customers, colleagues, and fans. Appropriate is produced by Beheroes.net.